Now, I think it's safe to say that Air Force One will be one of, if not the best coaster coming in 2023 and will be a contender for best in the world. Now, what makes a good coaster are its elements, and Air Force One just happens to have a really excellent set of elements, many of which are either rare or first in their kinds. So today, I'm going to rank up every element on Air Force One based off of how excited I am for it. Now, before we start, I'm just going to quickly go over every element on the ride for those of you who aren't familiar with the layout. The pre-lift is two small bunny hills before heading up the 154-foot lift hill with a 146-foot drop. Then it heads into the world's first Raven Trust Dive, followed by a small speed hill into North America's largest zero-g stall. Next up is an outer banked airtime hill in the style of the one on Steel Vengeance, followed by a double up. Then you head into a super fast barrel roll and another outer bank turn labeled as fakie airtime. Then you will head into a low to the ground turn pulling 3.75 G's before heading into another barrel roll, this time short and snappy. And then the finale, a little pop of airtime into the world famous chili dip and then the quad down. So jumping straight into this list on number 13 is the pre-lift. I mean, it's it's a pre-lift. It's just two little bunny hills that lift to try to give some airtime but kind of fail. I mean, it's not going to be the best pre-lift I've ridden. It'll, that goes to either Twisted Colossus or Twisted Cyclone because both of those are actually really good pre-lifts. So... It's, it's just a pre-lift. I mean, there's nothing really special about it. It gets you to the lift hill. Number 12 is the ground hugger. Now, this element looks great, but it's just a turn that pulls 3.75 Gs. This probably won't be the second worst element on the ride, and, but it is something that I have experienced many other times. So I'm just, I'm just not too excited for it because it's not really anything special. I mean, it's just a fast turn that pulls high G forces. Number 11 is the quad down. Once again, it's kind of still in the same category as the last one. It'll be great, but it's just not what I'm most excited for. This one ranks a little higher because it is airtime instead of positive Gs, and it just looks to be the better element. But again, it's just a bunch of like little airtime hills back and forth, so it's not really, again, anything that special. Number 10, the double up. This one is also kind of in the same category as the last two. However, this one has also sparked some curiosity in me because I don't really know what to expect. As in, will that camelback give strong ejector? Will it be weak ejector? I've never experienced a large camelback on an RMC hybrid, and I'm curious to see how it will feel. Number nine, the speed hill. Wow, it looks great, and I'm curious to see if it will actually give laterals, but how much laterals will it give? Again, it is just an airtime hill taken at a fast speed. It looks amazing as an element, but again, it's just an airtime hill. Number eight, the Raven Trust Dive. Now, I think most people will place this higher, but I really don't think that this element will be necessarily amazing. It'll be great. It'll probably give some lighter floater airtime and some whip, especially in the front row, but it just looks a little slow. I mean, again, It'll be great, but it's just a dive loop, and it doesn't even really seem to be like the usual RMC dive loop. It just looks to take it a little slower. Number seven, the first drop. I mean, it's an RMC first drop. How could you not be excited? It'll either be an insane catapult that will launch you into downtown Atlanta, or it'll be a more gentle but still amazing sustained ejector drop that will pin you into your restraint. Now, I think that this drop will be more of a mix of strong ejector and sustained, and I am excited for that. Number six is the barrel roll over the arcade. Now, you might be wondering, why is this so low on the list? It's number six, and the reason why is because if you look at VelociCoaster, for example, I've ridden that, and I've kind of been on, I've been on the barrel roll, so I kind of understand what it will feel like, you know? It, it's going to be very similar to the Mosasaurus on VelociCoaster, but this time it'll have some head choppers with the supports instead of the head chopper with the water, so... It's still going to be in a great element, super whippy, all of that, but I just think because I've ridden VelociCoasters, it's not as exciting for me because I've just experienced it, so I kind of already know what it'll feel like, but I'm still super excited because the speed that it takes, this has to be one of the faster inversions in the world because it's going maybe around 50 miles per hour through it, and that's just absolutely crazy through that over the arcade. Number five is the fakie airtime, which actually comes right after the barrel roll in the layout. So the speed that it goes from turning left to turning right, launching you up to the right, and then turning back to the left is crazy. It gets all of that done in less than two seconds going around 50 miles per hour. That's all you need to know to understand why I'm so excited for this element. 
Number four, the second barrel roll, or the final inversion. Once again, after seeing this test, I'm amazed at how fast this train just snaps right through it. This and the fakey airtime are probably going to be the sleeper hits of the ride because nobody's talking about these. They are all talking about number three, which is the zero-g stall. In fact, the longest zero-g stall in North America. I've never experienced a large zero-g stall because the ones on Velocicoaster and Iron Gwazi aren't very good, and the ones on Twisted Colossus and Wonder Woman Flight of Courage are good. It's just that the one on Twisted Colossus is kind of short, and the one on Wonder Woman has over shoulder restraints, so you can't really experience a stall the way that's intended to be. Long, slow, and with open restraints. I've never really experienced that. And the one on Air Force One looks like it could be the best stall in the world. Now, the only other contenders are really the ones on Zadra and Goliath, the one on Zadra being the longest in the world, and the one on Goliath being the longest in North America, and the first one ever. I mean, Zadra's is long, but it's taken so fast that it doesn't really seem like it gives the best hang time, and Goliath's, though being the first ever and the current longest in America, is still shorter than the one on Air Force One, which will become the new longest in America, so it really depends. Goliath crawls through its zero-g stall, but Air Force One might too, and it's a good thing, but also, you might want that floaty feeling, so it, it kind of I think it'll really come down to personal preference when you talk about best ERG stall in North America. Air Force One also has a great deal of whip going in and out of the stall, so we'll see where it ranks among the others in the world, but it is surely to be a fantastic element. Number two is the Outer Banked Airtime Hill. Now, several months ago, if you would have asked me, this would have been way lower on my list, but after watching the test runs, it is going way faster than I thought it would. If you look at Seal Vengeance's Outer Bank, it is a lot larger, it is a lot more sustained, it lasts a lot longer, but it doesn't get as tight at the apex. Air Force One gets noticeably tighter at the apex, and it looks like it will absolutely catapult you. I think that this will be a worthy first Outer Bank for me, or at least my first one without that weird twist into it like the one on Iron Gwazi, which is still pretty good, but this one looks to be better. So those were my most anticipated elements for Air Force One, ranked from least anticipated to most anticipated. What was your most anticipated element? Feel free to write that down below. And please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to know when I release my countdown of the elements of Air Force One from worst to best, so basically a part two of this video. And also to keep up for more Air Force One content because it is opening in 10 more days as of this recording and it should be eight more days as of when you're seeing this video. So yeah, it's coming so close and there will still be many more Air Force One videos to come. And with that said, please make sure to have a thrilling rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Oh, and in case you are wondering, number one was the chili dip. Duh.